All right. Today I'm going to talk about something everybody here enjoys. It's a very popular topic. It's software development methodologies. Woo! Yeah. You know? All right. No, actually everybody hates talking about development methodologies, especially software developers. Um, typically, I mean, we've tried a lot of these uh, different methodologies, waterfall, agile, I'm sure you have too. Some of them work, some of them don't work. At the end of the day, just keep one thing in mind, all of these things are theoretical. Uh, we don't necessarily want to just rewrite the book, but I do want to start a new conversation about a different way of thinking about getting software development done. Um, because at the end of the day, this is what we all want to do. We just want to get shit done. Especially as software developers, we don't care so much about the theory, we care about getting shit done. Um, but let's take a step back, let me introduce myself properly. My name is Ahmed Nasri. I live in Toronto, I work in the Valley. I work for a company called Mashape. Um, we build, we build API tools and marketplace technology. We actually operate the world's biggest API marketplace. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of developers, and tens of thousands of APIs. Uh, we just launched our uh, Mashape Analytics platform two weeks ago. Um, so if you're, if you're building APIs or microservices, you should check it out. Um, this is our team, which is a very awesome team. Um, this is pictures taken in the Valley. Some of us are from Toronto who are visiting down there. Um, and these are our customers. And they have very high expectations. There are people like yourselves, people in startups, developers, technologists, and the expectations are high because they're sometimes smarter than we are. They're also developers. They can build the exact same things we can build. Um, so it's a challenge for us. But before we get into the challenge of solving product problems and technology problems, we have another challenge as a team. We actually live across seven different cities. We speak eight different languages. We all speak English, but it's not our mother tongue. Um, we are from eight different nationalities, and we operate across six different time zones. So it's a nightmare if you think about it in terms of how do you manage an engineering team? How do you get shit done? Um, so we tried different methodologies, we tried different approaches. Uh, some of them worked well, some of them didn't. Um, but we all looked back at something we we're all familiar with, which is the open source world and how people across the world who work on th thousands of project, projects across thousands of cities speaking hundreds of languages, yet they still manage to ship code. They still manage to ship things on time. And it's amazing. And some of the core technologies that power everything we use today, I mean, the prime example being Linux, it's built by thousands of people around the world. Uh, and they don't necessarily use Agile, they don't necessarily use Waterfall, they just get shit done. So what's the secret? What's, what's there to be, what's the lesson learned there? Um, this is a five minute conversation, so I'm not gonna be able to go through all of this, but what I'm trying to get to here is some of the core foundations to software development, because we are talking about software development methodologies. And if you th think about the open source world, they usually get to focus on things like code quality, whether it's syntax or uh, simplicity or so, something as simple as documentation, having documentation on your project. That's a big challenge for companies, but at the same time, in an open source world, you cannot create a project and not document it. It will not go no, nowhere. You will not have a community. Um, things like writing tests. Have you ever seen an open source project that doesn't have tests, that was successful, or that had a community? It doesn't work that way. Um, and the other thing is that everything is a discussion there. People from all around the world, whether they're developers or designers or users of the project or actual core maintainers, they all have an open discussion that everybody's free to contribute to and everybody's free to add to, uh, which is not necessarily something you find in traditional software development methodologies where you know, so there are managers, there are leaders who are supposed to decide things. The community decides and the community makes things happen. Um, the other key aspect of it, and, and this relates to my um, slide about time zones and cities, is everything is asynchronous. Um, that is to say, you, don't ex you can't just get into a meeting room and talk to the other people in the room. You can't decide on a meeting time and just get on Skype and talk about it. Everybody's on different time zones, Every everybody's physically separate, so they still get things done without the ability to have meetings. And more importantly, without the ability to have managers, or as I like to call them, single points of failure, where they have to decide things for you. Um, so there's a lot of lessons to be learned there, and what I want to get to here is trying to learn from those lessons. This is actually my dog, Ruby. I just wanted to put that up there. Uh, one of the key lessons is dog fooding, not dog food. Um, dog fooding is a practice of using your own product. That's simply said. But the open source world is not necessarily just that. It's the practice of building the product that you need. So there's a little bit of a nuanced difference here. You don't go and build an open source project because somebody paid you to do it or because you want to sell it to somebody else. You build an open source project because you need something solved or you need something to, in your system or in your application. So you go and open source it. That's a key differential there. Um, you can't contribute to an open source project if you can't take criticism. And at the same time, you're not part of the community if you're not criticizing other members of the community, respectfully and properly and through proper guidelines. But you need to be part of that. Time's up. 
So I'm going to fast forward through this. This is not something that's well defined. This is something we're in a, I want to work with you on this. And in the spirit of open source, I want to have this an open, open conversation that everybody can contribute to. What's the open source model? Why does it work? And how can we adapt that to an open source, to a development methodology that we can all use? Thanks. Questions? Yes, sir. So when you do the hiring for your virtual assistant skills, do you use any specific kind of the prerequisites that they have to have worked on their own before? Are there any criteria that you use specifically? Or not? So the question was, what's the criteria when we do hiring in terms of people who work virtually? Um, is it something that they've worked on before, uh, worked on their own before, the ability to work remotely or not? Uh, generally speaking, the number one priority is communication. Like I said, we speak different languages, we come from different backgrounds, so being able to articulate yourself and connect very well with other people on the team is number one priority. Uh, technical skills and knowledge is actually the bottom of the list. Um, things like ability to articulate, ability to connect, ability to you know, convince other people of your argument is something very important, especially for developers. Yes. Yes, sorry, good point. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, our company is 22 people right now. The Linux community consists of, I think, by last count, um, 100,000 developers. So, yes. So, the question was, um, uh, how can we scale in something like this? Uh, for a team of 20 right now, how can we scale to perhaps hundreds of thousands? Um, I think the core aspect here is the, is the openness of getting shit done. Um, like I said, I'm trying to look and learn from the open source communities and how they get work done. And to them, there is no manager, there's no leader, there's no decision maker. Things happen naturally. Now that also doesn't work with things like timelines necessarily, uh, but I think the key, the key learning or the key lesson here is um, find people who want to work on these things. Right? You know, people who want to dog food it, not just a developer who's good at writing code. That doesn't work. You want you would, you should want to be part of this. You should want to build this product or this project, and then things just naturally happen to evolve. 